So every tally is accurate that there wasn't a transposed number or something of this sort. Uh, and so this is what we've asked for. It has to be completed according to the law by the Thursday following the Tuesday that falls after the election day. So in other words, this would not be tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow at 9 a.m., the re-canvas would occur in every one of the counties. So this has happened as recently as four years ago. When I won my primary, uh, my opponent uh, in that instance asked for a re-canvas, which I encouraged actually, and he and I had spoken about that. Uh, and it's, it's good, it's healthy uh, for this process to take place. We want to ensure above all else that the integrity of the process is a good one. Incidentally, I have not spoken with the Attorney General, but I've, I got his voicemail, I, let, I sent him a text, I have not heard back from him. Uh, I expect that I will at some point. The information I want to communicate to him is essentially the same information that I'm communicating with you. We want this process to move forward expeditiously. We want it to be something that everyone can have confidence in. What we know uh, is that there really are a number of significant irregularities, the specifics of which we're in the process of getting affidavits and other information uh, that will help us to get a better understanding of what did or did not happen. That, those will be forthcoming in the days ahead. But that's the cart getting in front of the horse because none of this will really uh, be followed through on until after the re-canvassing process. The thing that I would encourage people to know and that I've encouraged through my public statements uh, in what I will reaffirm even now is that we would be wise for the Attorney General to do what he is doing. He should be putting together a transition team and he should be having conversations with the expectation that if he is the person with the most votes at the end of this, that in fact he would, should be ready to take uh, the responsibility of being governor. At the very same time, we have a responsibility to ensure that the integrity of the process is such that if at the end of it we have the most votes, we are in a position to be able to continue forward with governance. It's just that simple. Again, the reasons for this, Kentucky sadly, and it's not unique to Kentucky, but there's more than a little bit of history of, of vote fraud in our state. Uh, just even since I've been governor, uh, McGoffin County comes to mind. There's others as well. Uh, you guys know, especially those of you from here, some of the history of that. Uh, the fact that our uh, Secretary of State uh, was on national uh, TV show, which, you know, I, I hesitate to suggest to anybody that anyone is partisan in the world of media coverage. That said, it was an interesting uh, choice of places for her to go while the route, the tolls, uh, the, the uh, roll was being tallied, the votes were being tallied and to call an election, uh, and this is from a woman who, with all due respect to her, is not exactly rock solid as it comes to following the letter of the law. She's currently under investigation uh, for misuse of voter files herself. Her father has already been convicted of multiple, I think 10 different federal uh, charges related to election fraud specific to her race. He's gonna be uh, sentenced and uh, probably spend significant portions of, if not the rest of his life in prison. Uh, so this is a family and an office that's been very corrupt. The state police have already raided that office, taken uh, files out of there uh, in recent months. So for her to try to jump the gun on this and interject herself into this, a little suspect as well. We know there have been thousands of, of uh, absentee ballots that were illegally counted. That's, that is known, uh, and this again is something that's being looked into. Uh, we know that there are reports of people having been turned away, uh, incorrectly turned away from various uh, voting booths around the state. Again, things that need to be corroborated and looked into. Uh, these are some of the things that we're in the process of determining. We know that in Jefferson County, there were a number of machines that did not work properly. So ballots were taken and just put in open boxes and people were told they'd be scanned in later. They may have been, they may not have been, we, we truly don't know but it's not typical that people would be asked to give a ballot that's supposed to be kept in confidence and scanned into a machine and just, just put it in a box. And this happened in multiple locations. All of this to say that we simply want to ensure that there is integrity in the process. We owe this to the people of Kentucky. I love this state. I love this country. 
You know, there was a time as a military officer that I took an oath to defend this nation and to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. One of the things that that Constitution does is afford us as citizens the right to go to the ballot box, to have our voice heard, uh, and to ensure that there is integrity in the process. My gracious, it's been topical uh, in this country. You look at what's been happening even in the last presidential election, lots of rumors and allegations, but certainly a lot of discussion about the integrity of our electoral process. We look at what happened literally less than a year ago now uh, in the last election in North Carolina, in uh, I think it was House District 9 in that state, uh, an election with, with frankly, um, things not unrelated to the things I've just laid out for you, but frankly a fraction of them, uh, what ended up being tossed because the process was, was broken. There it was 900 and some odd votes and there were two or three or four corroborated instances of things not being done right. And so ultimately decisions were made to basically relook at that entire process. What will happen here? There's a methodology to this. But I just want you to know that the reason we're doing this, we want the people of Kentucky to have absolute confidence that their votes were counted as they should have been counted, that the law was followed, and that regardless of whether they vote this side of the aisle or that side of the aisle, that they can always have confidence that the electoral process works. This is what I want. This is what I want for my kids and grandkids. It's what I want for the next governor, whether it's myself or the attorney general. The bottom line is someone's going to be the next governor, and everyone, that governor, every legislator, every other state constitutional officer, wants to be sure that there's integrity in the process. So with that said, I wanted you to be aware of where we stand. Again, I encourage these are not mutually exclusive things. The Attorney General should be on a parallel track with us to ensure that by the time there is resolution, the proper governor is ready to take the stage and, and continue to run forward. This state is having incredible success on many, many fronts. All-time records as it relates to everything of an economic sort. You know, the best unemployment we've ever had, lowest ever, most people working in our history, greatest amount of revenue ever coming in, greatest amount of exports of our products going to the marketplace, greatest amount of capital being invested in the state in the last four years. All these things are good, and it is critical to us as a commonwealth and to my family's future who lives here and their kids as they have them to be able to live in a state where we continue this momentum because Kentucky's upside is extraordinary and I want to make sure that it continues on the right trajectory. So I appreciate you all being here, I really do. Uh, stay tuned, this process will unfold. Again, to reiterate, the re-canvassing process happens not based on when people want it to, but literally by the letter of the law, we had up until next Tuesday to ask for the re-canvass to keep things moving quickly. We've already asked for it, but by law it will end up happening on, at 9 a.m. on Thursday of next week. That's when the re-canvass will happen, uh, and that will confirm or not confirm the current existing total, which is, you may know better than me, 5,100 votes-ish or something like that. So these are the reasons for why we're moving forward with the re-canvass. Again, in the meantime, we're also corroborating some of these other things that I've mentioned to you, some of which are known, other of which are reported. Uh, we'll have more information, and as we have it, we'll keep you guys uh, in the loop with it. We really will. I mean, what, this isn't meant to be anything. We'll, we'll keep you uh, as abreast of everything we have uh, as we have it and as we're able to share. So I appreciate it. I appreciate your interest in this, and do understand, and I'll close with this. It applies to this race, but it applies to more than simply this race or simply to Kentucky. This is critical, especially as we move more and more into an electronic day and age, and as the old and the new are melded together. This is an American uh, issue. It really is and a concern, and we've seen it come up time and again. This unfortunately happens to be a time when it's on the radar screen in Kentucky, but we'll get to the bottom of it. Uh, and I'm confident uh, that in the end, uh, the right uh, results will be delivered, and I will be entirely comfortable with whichever way they go if I'm confident that the process has been served. That's really all I want. It's what I want from government is good government. It's what all of us should want. Thank you all very much. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you, guys.